So vertical asymptotes aren't that difficult to find. We have to find places where the function's undefined and the denominator equals 0, but the numerator is not 0 there. And so when you find these vertical lines that the function wants to up, sort of nestle up against either this way or this way or this way or this way, depending upon what the derivative is doing. If it's increasing, it'd go like this. If it's decreasing, it'd go like this, and so on. So vertical ones, not that bad. Horizontal ones, well, this is a separate issue. And I really urge you to think about horizontal asymptotes in a different light than vertical asymptotes. You know, a lot of people think, well, yeah, asymptotes, horizontal, vertical, OK. But really think about them as separate ideas. In one case, the vertical asymptote asks, where is the function undefined? And is the curve exploding up, you know, going up to the higher reaches of the sky, or plummeting downward, or some combination of that? Now, horizontal asymptotes, on the other hand, is asking a completely different question. Horizontal asymptotes are about the issue of what happens as you go off to the horizon. As you drift off, whether it's going off to the positive x-axis or the negative x-axis, what is the function doing? Is the function just sort of going off to infinity? Is the function going off to negative infinity? Or is the function sort of about to land somewhere and sort of want to land either coming in this way or coming in that way? If the function wants to land somewhere, then what it's approaching, that horizontal line, is called a horizontal asymptote. So it's a little different than a vertical asymptote. A vertical asymptote, that represents a vertical line that the function wants to go up and shoots off to infinity or minus infinity as it gets closer and closer to the line. A horizontal asymptote is what you want to land onto. Imagine a plane landing. It comes down gracefully or coming up gently and gracefully cutting it. Let me show you an example of a vertical asymptote, returning to the function we looked at before. And you can see that actually there's a vertical asymptote here at 1. Let me try to move it. My line's not that long, so I'll try to share it. First of all, share it here. Do you see how this curve is coming down and gently is coming up to and approaching this height, that horizontal line? That line is at y equals 1. It turns out that this curve will never actually cross that line and, in fact, never even touch that line. But it will get closer and closer and closer to that line as you go further and further and further out. Sort of interesting notion, this notion of sort of infinity, getting infinitely close as you go infinitely far out. It's really a beautiful notion because it's hard for us to visualize that in the physical world because things are, can be broken down into you know, atoms and so forth. And we're all sort of quantum in that sense. But in mathematical ideas and mathematical functions, we can actually see that getting arbitrarily close and yet never touching. Similarly, off here on the left, you see the same activity. At 1, the function is getting arbitrarily close. It wants to land that way. And we see that, in fact, therefore, this is a horizontal asymptote. If the function were, by the way, this, which is just the same function upside down, you can at least see what it looks like when a function wants to rise up to an asymptote. It wants to rise up to the asymptote. It looks just like that similarly here. How do you find these asymptotes? That's the big question. And what you want to do is you really want to ask what happens as you go off to the horizon. You want to ask what happens as you let the x's get really, really large. So what you actually want to do is take a limit. You want to let the x's get really, really big, bigger and bigger and bigger. And so how do you do that? Well, what we actually do is suppose we have an example, f of x equals 1 over x. And I want to find the asymptotes to this. So what I do is I take a limit. What I want is I want the x's to get really, really big. I want to drift off to the horizon and see what the height of the function is doing as the x's go off. So I'm going to take the limit, and I'm going to write something new here. It's just a symbol as x goes off to infinity. That means as x goes off to that, to that right horizon, I want to ask, what is the function doing? So what is this number approaching, if anything, as x goes off to infinity? Let's think about that. What this symbol means is that x is getting larger and larger and larger and larger and larger without bound. What happens to this quantity here? Well, if I put in a large value here, 1 over a large value, like 1 over 10, this produces a tenth. But x is going to be even bigger than that. So what if I put in 100 here? Well, then I get 1 over 100. That's even smaller. But in fact, x is going to be bigger than that because x is going off to infinity. And so I can put 1,000 here. That's 1 over 1,000. What are we approaching here? What number are we heading towards? Well, this is 1 over 10. Then we see 1 over 100. Then we see 1 over 1,000. Then we see 1 over a million. We see 1 over a billion. That thing is approaching the number 0. It's getting closer and closer to the number 0. So in fact, I say this limit equals 0. What about this example? Limit as x approaches infinity 
of, let's just say, x cubed. What does that limit equal? Well, as x gets larger and larger, what happens to x cubed? Well, it gets even larger and larger and larger, right? If I put in a 10 here, 10 cubed is 1,000. If I put in 100 there, I'd get 100 cubed, which is even bigger. So this limit, I would say, is infinite, or some people would say doesn't exist. So the point is, if we have stuff downstairs, and we make that really large, that tends to pull the function down, make it grounded. If I have stuff upstairs and nothing downstairs, then in fact, I'm going to get very, very large. In this case, if the limit exists equals a number, I say that that limit is a horizontal asymptote. So if the limit exists, then I say we have a horizontal asymptote, horizontal which means that we have y equals the limit. So if the limit exists, then there is a horizontal asymptote, and that horizontal asymptote is at y equals the answer. So in this case, what we see is no horizontal asymptote in the second example. But in this example, I see a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Now, by the way, in our discussion of vertical asymptotes, remember vertical asymptotes are always of the form x equals something because they're vertical lines. x is always the same thing. Here for horizontal, we always have y equals. OK, let's take a look at some more elaborate examples to get a sense of how to take these kind of limits. So let's look at this example. Limit as x approaches infinity of, let's say, x3x divided by 2x squared plus 1. Okay, so I want to see what the asymptote, if there's a horizontal asymptote here or not, so I let the x's drift off to infinity. As I let the x's drift off to infinity, what happens to this function? Well, now it's a little harder, isn't it? Because on the top I'm going to infinity, and on the bottom I'm going to infinity. I have infinity over infinity. That's actually, believe it or not, an indeterminate form. Just like 0 over 0, infinity over infinity is another example of an indeterminate form. So how do we resolve this? What we have to do here is think that the x's are going off to infinity. So all I care about is basically who is going to infinity faster? Who's winning the fight? Well, it turns out that coefficients basically play no role at all in the growth. Because this is just multiplying by 3, multiplying by 2, doesn't really mean anything. However, here I see an x, whereas here I see an x squared. So which quantity is actually growing faster? Well, the answer is the x squared is going to infinity faster than the x, because this is going 10, 100, 1,000. This is going 10 squared, which is 100, and then immediately 100 squared, which is 10,000. And you can see it's dramatically increasing. So this really is dominating. So since this is dominating, this is the thing that really is going to take effect. So what I see here is that really this thing is pulling us down. And the fact that this is going off to infinity is still a fact, but this is going off to infinity so much faster that in fact this whole thing acts like this and squashes down to zero. So in fact here I see that there is a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Let's try another example. Limit as x approaches infinity of 5x cubed divided by negative 2x squared plus x minus 7. So I want to see if there are any horizontal asymptotes here. All I look at is the highest term on the top and the highest term on the bottom, because those are the terms that are going to basically be the soldiers that lead the rest of the thing into battle. That really shows me what the numerator and the denominator is growing like.